I love these moves of sudden eras, the same moves. Angel second class. <laughs> Angel second class has to. Let me gather myself together and I'll just show my outro. Hello everyone, how are we doing? It's the Christmas time, the festive time. I hope you're enjoying your time. Hopefully you are off and taking some time off to rest and have fun with your family and friends. Okay, here we are. I had no plans to do anything special for Christmas. Not that we do not have the vibe here. Yes, there's so much vibe, but uh, where I live, we, there is no actual special thing when it comes to, oh, we have to watch uh, Christmas movies. There's a lot of shopping going on, that's for sure. And you can hear a lot of Christmas songs and Mariah Carey <laughs> everywhere most of the time as well. And at, and at the same time, there is a uh, beautiful decor decoration so it's all happening but uh, christmas m watching christmas movies is not really a thing we do eat a lot of mince pie mince meat pies and cakes and uh, da 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 all the good stuff as as you know that i did uh, some of you may know that i did a kamenji post uh, to ask you would you like me to watch something for christmas and I have seen, like I mentioned, like so many of the others are watching Die Hard. Okay, it's not something that I have watched as well, so I thought it's like an action movie. But uh, I, I feel like everybody's watching it, so was not uh, really in the mood to watch it at the moment. But then many of you had suggested to watch It's a Wonderful Life, a black and white movie from 1946. So I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. I had never heard about this movie and it was a bit of a struggle trying to find the movie, the black and white one. There was so, uh, se actually several, about seven, eight I could find that was in colored version, but black and white was difficult. But many of you mentioned, don't bother if it's colored. So somehow finally managed to find the black and white one. And here I am going to watch it's a wonderful life from 1946 and I was like thinking about the title of the movie it's a wonderful life and it was from 46 that's right after World War II I do not know whether it has had anything to do with the World War II ending uh, but um, there is a couple in the poster that's all I see the, there's a couple in the poster the the gentleman carrying the lady so do not know what's going to happen since it is Christmas related I, I really have no idea how it's going to end up but I'm very much looking forward to it the only other black and white movie I've watched is from it's the 60s my fair lady I have watched it about a decade ago it's I remember it to be a beautiful movie I love the music the songs in it this I think this is my second black and white movie if I'm not mistaken that I'm going to watch so very much looking forward to it without further ado let's join to see and as always I will share my my takeaway of the movie after the movie ends so do not hang up after the movie ends I will have a wrap up on my takeaway for the movie and uh, share with you how I found it to be so without further ado let's join to see it's a wonderful life from 1946 you're now in Bedford Falls help my friend Mr. Bailey George is a good guy Give him a break, God. Oh, I hope George is okay. Something's the matter with Daddy. Something's wrong with George. I hope George is fine. So many prayers. Looks like we'll have to send someone down. A lot of people asking for help for a man named George Bailey. He sent for me, sir? Yes, Clarence. What's that book you've got there? The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. You do a good job and you'll get your way. I love that one. It was really good. That's your problem, George Bailey. Something happens here you'll have to remember. Here comes Perry Bailey! Perry! Ah! Oh! Help! 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 George saved his brother's life, which infected his left ear. Mr. Potter! Who's that? That's Henry F. Potter, the richest and meanest man in the county. Richest and the meanest goes well together. Hello, George. Hello, Mary. Hello, Violet. Shoelaces? Please, Georgie. <laughs> I like him. You like him? Every boy. <laughs> A new man 
magazine. Is this the year you can't hear on? I'll love you till the day I die. I'm going out exploring someday. You watch. <laughs> you are pay to be a canary. Oh? Anything I can do back here? Oh, take those cups and old Mrs. Blaine. Oh, poor man has gotten bad news. Poison. Mr. Gower, I think... Oh, good guy. I'm not crying, Mr. Potter. Just a minute, son. Not with my money. Mr. Potter, you have no family, no children. Oh, I suppose I should give it to failures like you. He's not a failure. You're the biggest man in town. Run along. Bigger than him. I'll talk to you tonight. Oh, poor boy. What is Miss Blaine's voice of capsules? Blaine, get away! Don't you know that boy's very sick? You put something wrong in those capsules. You put something bad in those capsules. Just look and see what you did. That's a very nice relationship. Who is it? George Bailey. I like it. I like George Bailey. That's my trick here, George. Sound like you said no charge. That's right. Who? Oh, George Bailey. A little present from old man Gowick. He did? My old boss. <laughs> right. Hi, Ernie. Hi, George. Hi, Bert. George. <laughs> <laughs> my last meal in the old boarding house. Oh, my land, my blood pressure. I wish we could send Harry to college with you. Harry will take my job in the building alone, work there for four years, and then he'll go. You wouldn't consider coming back to the building alone, would you? Well, I, I couldn't face being cooped up for the rest of my life in a shabby little office. I'm sorry, Pop, I didn't mean that. I... You get yourself an education and get out of here. <laughs> Pop, you want a shock? I think you're a great guy. That's the sweetest thing a son can say. How are you? What'd you get here? Joe College Wayne, right? They call me. Yeah, what am I being? Marty! Well, it's all home. Do me a favor, will you, George? Will you remember my kid sister, Mary? Dance with her, will you? I knew some guy came up and tripped me. Or you kind remember, of a guy George? This is Mary. Well, I'll be seeing you. Now, to get back to my story, see? Oh, why don't you stop annoying me? <laughs> <laughs> I love this moves of certain eras, the same moves. 80s and their moves. 20s, 30s, and they'll move. No! Stop! Stop! Woo! <laughs> That's a swimming. I told Harry I thought I'd be bored to death. Do I look as funny as you do? You know, if it wasn't me talking, I'd say you were the prettiest girl in town. <laughs> well, why don't you say it? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, Mary. I'll take it. George, quick, your father's had a stroke. I think that's all we'll need you for, George. I know you're anxious to make a train. But before you go, I'm sure the whole board wishes to express its deep sorrow at the passing of Peter Bailey. It was his faith and devotion for this organization. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to get to my real purpose. I claim this institution is not necessary to this town. I make a motion to dissolve this institution. Neither you nor anybody else can say anything against his character. He didn't save enough money to send Harry to school, let alone me. But he did help a few people get out of your slums, Mr. Potter. Well, in my book, he died a much richer man than you'll ever be. No. Oh, shit. You're the board here. You do what you want with this thing. If only to have some place where people can come without mm -hmm. crawling the potter. Well said, George. Poor oh, Bailey. What no Bailey. Dogs. I want you to meet Ruth. Hello. <laughs> How do you do? Well, I wired you. I had a surprise. Here she is. Meet the wife. What? What am I doing? Congratulations. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what pretty girl like you doing marrying this brother of mine? Father offered him a job. Oh, that's the end of George's dream. I spoke out of turn. I never said I'd take it. I've been holding the bag here for four years and... Well, I won't let you down, George. Uh oh. Poor George. How do you like her? Oh, she's swell. <laughs> Looks like she can keep Harry on his toes. Did you know that Mary Hatch is back from school? Mm -hmm. Nice girl. Mary. <laughs> Mom's doing that talk. She lights up like a firefly whenever you're around. I think I'll go out and find a girl and do a little passionate necking. If you'll just point me in the right direction. <laughs> I love the relationship between the mother and son, but I feel I think George will do fine. Excuse me. Hello, George Ford. What give? Nothing. Men and women used to be in great shape those days. Like they're supposed to. Are you game, Vi? Let's make a night of it. Oh, I'd love it, Georgie. What'll we do? Let's go out in the fields and take off our shoes and walk through the grass. <laughs> 
Then we can climb Mount Bedford and smell the pine <laughs> gas. Georgie, what about? have you gone crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Walk in the grass in my bare feet. Oh, 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 ten miles up to Mount Bedford. Shh, forget oh, about the whole thing. <laughs> Okay, she's not into this kind of romantic things. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, Mary, I just happened to be passing <laughs> by. Yes, so I noticed. <laughs> well, are you coming in or aren't you? <laughs> Mary, who's down there with you? It's George Bailey, Mother. What do you want? <laughs> I don't know. What do you want? Not a thing. I, I just came in to get warm. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Okay, you are leaving Mary, your head. Mary. Sam wants Mary. Mary wants George. George doesn't want to admit. Forgot my hat. Hello, Sam. How are you? Friend of yours here, George Bailey. Well, George Baileyovsky. What are you trying to do? Steal my girl? <laughs> well, I don't know. It just. He says it's the chance of a lifetime. George, George, George. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> Finally, what took you so long? Ah, oh, finally they got married. Why is the mother behaving so weirdly? First pairing, now George. Hard to get married to Sam. You speak for yourself. Funny going Carefree life. Bank, George. Where are they running to? George, can I see a minute? This is a pickle, George. This is a pickle. All right, now what happened? Hand over all, all our cash. All of it. Can we all Holy mackerel. Oh, no. The whole town's gone crazy. I have some news for you, folks. I was just talking to old man Potter. Bank's gonna reopen next week. I got $242 in here. I need cash. You don't say that. I've got to have How much do you need? I got $2,000. Here's $2,000. This will tie us over to the bank reopen. $242. Oh, come on, Tom. What about the rest? $20. Oh, yeah. You yeah, make sense. Oh, Thompson, how much do you want? Could I have $1,750? Oh. Yes. I think George has found the perfect wife. She is the wife any man would need. On tray, monsieur. Oh, beautiful. I think we all can learn a few things from Mary and the friends. Mary, where did you? <laughs> I love you truly. Remember the night we broke through windows in this old house? I think he's got the best gift, George. And Mary thinks she's got the best gift, too. Welcome to Bailey Park. Oh, that's awesome. Mr. and Mrs. Martini, welcome home. Good old George, he's always making a speech. Bread, that this house may never know hunger. And wine, that joy and prosperity may reign forever. Look, Mr. Potter, I'm just your little rent collector. Look at it today. 90% owned by suckers who used to pay rent to you. I'm sure Mary's. Oh, George, why? Quite a cigar, Mr. Potter. I'll send you a box. <laughs> George, I am an old man, so that makes I'm it a crooked awesome. old man. You know, just but George Bailey is not smart, ambitious young yes. man who hates his job. The point is, they want to hire you. Hire me? Yeah, they want you to manage my affairs. You're not talking to somebody else around here. This is me. You remember me? I don't need 24 hours. I know right now, and the answer is no, no. Yes. Awesome, George. Buffalo girl, won't you come out tonight? Hi. Hi. Why in the world do you ever marry a guy like me? I didn't want to marry anybody else in town. I want my baby to look like you. I, I promised you. You what? My baby. Mary had her baby, a boy. Then she had another one, a girl. Night after night, George came back late from the office. Oh, his brother. Oh, again. Congratulations. What's his mother had lunch with her president's wife. What'd what? they have to eat? What'd they have to eat? Eat. Good oh, morning, Mr. Potter. What's the news? Oh, well, 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 Harry Bailey wins Congressional Medal. You just can't keep those Baileys down. Now, can you, Mr. Potter? Well, I guess you forgot something. Huh? You forgot something. Well, aren't you going to make a deposit? <laughs> well, then it's usually customary to bring the money with you. Where's the 8,000? 
He gave the 8,000 to this idiot. Come on, Potter. You are sitting on millions. What's the matter with you? <sighs> Yeah? Did you see Uncle Billy with any cash last night? He had it on his desk, counting it before he closed up. Maybe, I don't want any maybe, but we've got to find that money. Where's that money, you silly, stupid old fool? George. You realize what this means? It means bankruptcy and scandal and... Shh, 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 George, 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 collect yourself. Was it the Merry Christmas wreath, the window? No, I was left at the office. Let me get this star up there, it is, dear. Oh, George. I think, Mary, you should take George aside and ask what, what went wrong. I'm sorry, Mary. Janie, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I, you go on and practice. Uh, Pete, I owe you an apology, too. I'm sorry. Nothing, Daddy. I'm in trouble, Mr. Potter. Oh. Please help me, Mr. Potter. Help me, won't you, please? You misplaced $8,000. Have you notified the police? No, sir. I, I didn't want the publicity. Bond? Real estate? Collateral of any kind? Oh, I have some life insurance. And how much is your equity in it? Five hundred dollars. And you asked me to lend you eight thousand. <laughs> You're worth more dead than alive. I'm going to swear out a warrant for your arrest. Misappropriation of funds. Manipulation. Oh. And can't the bodyguard or whoever the helper just be a man for a change? Because he saw the whole situation himself. You're up there, and you can hear me. Show me the way. I'm at the end of my rope. I... Are you all right, George? Will somebody take you home? Please go home, Mr. Bailey. This is Christmas Eve. Bailey? Which Bailey? <gasps> oh! The next time you talk to my wife like that, you'll get worse. Who's that? Your name is Welsh. You don't come into my place no more. No, that's what I get for praying. Not your day, George. Not your day. When everything comes down, it comes down like pouring, isn't it? Oh. Was he the one sent from above to find George and help? Clarence. Why? Wife gave me this on my last birthday. I passed away in it. Passed away in it. <laughs> How did you happen to fall in? I didn't fall in. I jumped in to save George. To save me? Well, I did, didn't I? It's against the law to commit suicide around here. Yeah, it's against the law where I come from, too. Where do you come from? Heaven? <laughs> well, who are you, then? Clarence Art, buddy. AS2. AS2? What, what, what's that, AS2? Angel, second class. <laughs> in just second class is to to think of killing yourself for money yeah now think it's just things like that how do you know that i told you i'm your guardian angel so you still think killing yourself would make everyone feel happy I suppose it'd been better if i'd never been born at all you've got your wish you've never been born <laughs> come on get your clothes on i'm sorry i'll stroll you fly i've got my wings yeah i've got your wings <laughs> That's all right. Martini's a friend of mine. Are you sure it's a friend of yours? You weren't born, George. Oh, uh, hello, Nick. Hey, where's the martini? Hey, look, I'm the boss. You want a drink or don't you? Double bourbon, will you? Quick, huh? Okay. You see a lot of strange things from now on. <laughs> Mr. Gower. Mr. Gower. Nick, isn't that Mr. Gower the druggist? That rumhead spent 20 years in jail for poisoning a kid. Nick's. You are not there to stop Gower from putting that poison. What? You've been given a great gift, George. A chance to see what the world would be like without you. You should see Potter, how he's doing. Hey, where'd the building and loan move to? They went out of business years ago. Yeah. I know everything's shot in this jump. Hey, that's an end to my other thing. Where do you take me home? I'm going off my nut. Where do you live? Uh-oh. There's no Mary. There are no kids, George. But where are the houses? We went here to build them. Oh! Your brother, Harry Bailey, was 
drowned at the age of nine. Harry wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save Harry. You really had a wonderful life. Don't you see what a mistake it would be to throw it away? Mary! Mary! Don't you know me? What's happened to us? I don't know you. Let me go! Mary! That's my wife! Back at the same point. Get me back! I don't care what happens to me! Get me back to my wife and kids! Help me, Clarence, please! I want to live again. Please, God, let me live again. It's snowing again. You all right? I've been looking all over town trying to find you. What do you know about that? Merry Christmas! <laughs> Paper. That's a warrant for my arrest. Isn't it wonderful? I'm going to jail. Merry Christmas, Daddy. Kids, Pete. <laughs> Kids, Jamie. <laughs> Where's Susan? <laughs> uh, hallelujah. George, Mary, darling. George, darling. Oh, George. Are you real? <laughs> George, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Come in, Uncle Billy. Everybody. <laughs> She told yes. some people you were in trouble with it. Another run on the bank. Merry Christmas. Oh, Mr. Martini, Mr. Martini. I'm worse than a drinker. If ever I get a husband. There you are, George. Here's some beautiful. Mr. Gower cabled you need cash. My office instructed $25,000. Stop it. Merry Christmas, Sam Wainwright. Oh! Merry Christmas! <laughs> He's not dead, George. Toast to my big brother George, the richest man in town. <laughs> Christmas present from a very dear friend of mine. Had a boy, Clarence. Thank you so much. Let me gather myself together and I'll just share my outro. Hello friends, welcome back. So I just finished watching It's a Wonderful Life from 1946. I had to take a few minutes actually to collect myself. It left me extremely emotional after watching the movie. I think it's one of definitely, undoubtedly one of the best movies I've watched that urges you to reflect upon life to contemplate about life, what's going on, how you think about things, how you look at life, how you look at relationships, everything. Thank you so much for suggesting this. Like I said, I had no plan to do anything special for Christmas. And I know the usual Christmas movies that's out there. Um, I was actually not prepared to do anything. But after you suggested in the uh, YouTube community chat, so many of you suggested to watch It's a Wonderful Life and I'm so glad that I took the opportunity and had a look. Undoubtedly superb movie. Thank you so much. So before I go in to my outro just to share with you my takeaway. If you have not subscribed to the channel please consider doing so and if you like the video give it a thumbs up as well and also hit the notification bell so you would know when I release the next video. And you, as always, you can find the full length reactions, everything that I've done so far over at Patreon. Let's dig in. Before I go, actually for this movie, most of my takeaways are going to be mostly on the themes that I saw in the movie. So be before I do that, I want to just give a very honorable nod to the perfection when it comes to the acting the setter setting everything in this movie i do i actually did not know any of the actors who appeared in this movie so i have i have no idea of these uh old actors but um i think i saw the it was donna reed who was the lady mary in it 
and i have seen her when she was young some pictures on here and there so i had no i have never watched a movie for, with her so it's it's beautiful it's really nice to see actually people have been of the normal sizes back then as people are supposed to be people look quite healthy and happy so that's nice to see as well and this movie was made after the world war 2 one of the some of the toughest times the people all over the world went through together i think this kind of a movie this must be one of the best movies that actually america brought out and it might might have been extremely uplifted for the people who watched it and for during christmas time it's 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 really this is these are the kind of movies i think should be there because christmas after christmas comes a new year new beginnings people do tend to reflect on life people tend to tend to have their resolutions yes nowadays our resolutions are mostly about losing weight or earning more money but when the, with this kind of a movie it gives such a strong message to for people to actually look at life and look at what's important in life but also i also wanted to just reflect upon one thing this is again a black and white movie we watch a lot of movies out of the movies that i watched i think 99.9% of the movies are going to be colored and this movie was about christmas the first scene that is going is christmas decorations you can see the the snow everything but for me actually without colors it still it did not take away the beauty of it you have the imagination anyway and it's it was so beautiful it was so i think some at times it will be nice even nowadays to bring that uh, black and white effect back because the for us to then as the viewers and then for the directors as well you focus on a more of a stronger plot uh, like a stronger message through the movie because you take off that vibrancy the the uh, distractions from the movie because colors distract us us as humans we like colors we like the uh, feeling uh, seeing things differently and the beauty of it vibrancy we like it but when you take it off when you tone it down i feel like it's easier to uh, bring your focus into something more deep you can discuss and reflect on a deeper uh, point that way not that movies uh, which are in color does not do do not do that i'm not saying that but i feel like it had a, like it it brings your focus straight to uh, certain movies may be better in black and white that's how i felt those two point aside i wanted to share with you few of the things that i actually found in this movie one of the major things was finding purpose in life it was this george again he he had dreams in life he wanted to pursue his dream and so many things was putting him off he wanted to go study he wanted to go out of his town and study in the college but because life was happening he could not do that he was getting this close to doing all of this but life happened so he he had to postpone and then he was very disappointed because his brother when he had the opportunity to go out i think he grabbed a lot of uh, things that as a young man that may attract you he got an opportunity out of town he got his degree he got a beautiful wife life seemed settled whereas george was stuck in the town that he thought was so rusty it was a town he wanted to go away from and be in the big city maybe new york right but eventually then him finding this wonderful wife that i will talk a, a little later and having kids and then the whole story go on and then finally clarence coming in and him being taken away it's it's, it's a wonderful thing isn't it with the many lives you touch when you are alive you touch a lot of lives good or bad hopefully we try to make it as good as possible if you try to take that yourself out of it what a hole you live leave in that place like what a difference it will may, may be it's none of i think none of us get the opportunity to just go out of this life and the picture and see what we, life would be without us yes life is immensely different but 
yes mm. those people wouldn't realize if we were not there because we were not in the equation at all but for us we find meaning in our lives and purpose in our lives as well with the people that we live with the people we associate with it can be the family it can be the friends it can be another course of life that's something that you are serving to help people so there is like that is the beauty of it i think in the modern world we try to live so sometimes i think it's not a choice as well we are pushed to live this lonely lives that we are so alone and secluded but humans are not supposed to be like that humans are always this in gathered in groups you you work together you work with people there was per, working towards a goal and always community we humans have to be in this community so that is where we find purpose in life i feel like the more and more we try to go away from it the more and more this we hear a lot of this depression people are people need support mental support because they are not doing well it's it's not it's nothing wrong with it i'm just saying i feel like sometimes what people really need is human touch which which is, which is really funny we are trying to we re- truly need it but at the same time we are trying to go away from it as well and this society we have created it make it easier to go away from that touch be out of touch from the humans it's 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 really sad but i i thought the one of the key things is just finding the purpose in life and once you found it we always question ourselves is this what i really want i'm not happy doing this i'm not happy doing that but once you find a purpose in life that is where you are going to be happy that is when you actually feel like giving your 100% and and on the day that you actually have to go you can be happy i have lived a life it's actually not about the money you have made it's not about the the luxury you have been able to flash and make other people jealous no i do not i really do not think people who are super wealthy and flashy and all this and that when they are going to die we all die as that empty naked person as we came to this world that's how we go right it's all the mem- at the end of the day it's all about the memories that you have the experiences you have had and the people the lives that you have touched the other point i wanted to think about is what are the riches in life the riches in life for me i think after watching this movie i think many of you may agree definitely family having this close family it doesn't matter whether it's blood related or the family that you've adopted as a family your friends and being content in life that is being rich if you can be content with your life you are a very rich man my friends being happy so being i think happiness and content go goes hand in hand in my opinion when you are content in life you are involuntarily become being happy yeah because you do not yearn for something better something more something you do not push yourself down so much because you are you are being content yes you need to have ambition i'm not saying just be content and not not have ambition in life but i think when when you are being content you appreciate what you have being able to appreciate what you have makes you a happier person and then also another riches the riches in life i say is your ability to help others we all have the opportunity to help others in one way or the other it's it does you do not have to be a rich person to help another person it may be actually having the opportunity to talk to a person who's lonely we all have busy lives we all try we are on in the rush but if you can spare five minutes to either sit down and talk or if it is someone who's reaching out to you through an email if it is someone something some way grab that opportunity you will be a happier more wholesome more content person eventually so those are the riches in life that i i when i watched the movie i was thinking about it It's awesome this movie really gets gets you thinking. It's few movies do that. This it really gets you to think about life. The other one that I think all of us definitely saw in this movie is when life becomes rough. 
and tough. Just hold tight. Just don't give up. Just really don't give up. I, I think all of us, me included, we all have come across a time where like, this is not happening. I've had enough. This is it. When that happens, we all come across, come through it. If you if you come across that kind of situation, never think. Because I, I think I have heard and I've known people think it has been weak. If you feel like, oh, you want to give up. It's okay to feel like you want to give up. It's not about what you feel. It's just what you do. Just don't give up. Because life will move on. Life must move on. Things will happen. Things will move on. Move. Things will move in the right and wrong direction. It's how you take it. Just think about it. Yes, we do not get the opportunity George had to, like I said, to get out of life and think how it will be if you're not if you're not born. But when you think about it, at some sometimes at the toughest of times in my life, I'm thinking somebody else have it tougher than I do. They truly do. Life can be miserable at times. Life can be extremely sometimes you feel it's extremely unfair it, it, sometimes you you don't see like like they say you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel we all have come come across that situation for some of us it may be easier than the others for some of us it can be a way tougher than anyone else that we know had but do not give up you can push through the toughest on the roughest of times you will look back at that one day just look what I've done, just look what I've pushed through and come through and I'm here I am on the other side. I think that's, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you would agree with me, that is one major things that we all can see from this movie. Also, I, I want to say, because when Mary was there for George, I think you can't, you can't find another Mary, <laughs> you can't create another Mary, but there are a lot of Marys in the world. I know it is getting, uh, uh, there's a scarcity, scarcity of women or spouses like that, men or women actually. It's just, um, it's finding that simplicity, it's amazing if you can do that. If you are a lady who's watching this, so if you are a man, of course you can do the same way if you are not. Is just to see the bright side of things it's not always like when you have a partner we all have good times and bad times as couples we can go through good times and bad times together but sometimes as individuals we have good times and bad times simple thing that we can think about recent in the recent couple of years is how many people lost their jobs like endless amounts of people lost their jobs and if you are the spouse of a person who has lost a job and it may that be per maybe that person is a breadwinner of the family you need to really take a step back and re try to put yourself in that person's shoes just think how much of a pressure and stress that person may be going through because in his or her head they are thinking okay i have to somehow support the family push through and carry the, steer the ship somehow and at the same time the the social pressures that okay you are jobless or now what's what's going to happen or what's going to happen for the kids days the, the, maybe education maybe a daycare i do not know so many so many issues people have when when life gets tough try to be that sunshine i know it is difficult because you yourself will be doubting how are we to going to get through this I always remember people have had really tough times. You don't have to look far behind actually. We have people have had some of the toughest lives you can ever imagine within the last century. It's if you can't be sunshine, just try to be understanding, kind, compassionate, that and affectionate, you know? That is what you need when you are down from a partner. And Mary, that character was fantastic because their money that they that George wanted to use on this luxurious honeymoon, they had to use it. And Mary actually volunteered to give it away and uh, to settle off this the financial issue the company was pay, facing. With that, you should be feeling. I mean, that is a huge deal that is settled off. I think, even in my opinion, it's much better than going for a honeymoon and then worrying. What are we going to do about this financial issue? Because you are under immense pressure. 
when you are going through a situation like that. So when they settled it off, and I really like how Mary was slowly, slowly while having kids, she was fixing the house, making it to a beautiful nest. That's ambition. That is hope. That is passion. That is humans going somewhere. That is the perseverance in people. You, we all have that. Just don't give up and just try to. If you get come across that person, that woman or man, just hopefully you can grab the opportunity because having a person like that in your life you don't want anything else because life will happen no matter what life is going to happen there is going to be good times there are going to be bad times that is what life is nobody has it perfect but if you have the right relationship with the right people if you surround yourself with the right people i think you can be a rich happy content man wherever you are whatever your financial situation is things will work out what you need is a person who can give you hope rather than making you hopeless it's okay to feel helpless okay we all do but once you feel hopeless that that is a huge concern in life so you i think you really need someone who can pick you up when life's get tough which is bound to happen not once or twice many times in life think about it if you have that opportunity do so and if you are more than finding the person be that person for the others try to we we all can actually be that person then life will, will be a better place if we can change ourselves to be that as well anyway like i said it's a beautiful movie i had no idea this movie existed so thank you so much for recommending this to me if you like the video do not forget to give it a thumbs up and if you have not subscribed to the channel please consider doing so and as always the full length reaction everything can be found over at patreon but before i go i want to wish you all a merry christmas and i hope you have a lovely time with your loved ones this movie gave us the opportunity to reflect how important relationships are so i really hope you have a wonderful time with your loved ones and enjoy your time until next time merry christmas and i'll say happy new year in my next video have a great day everyone